It's the Real Talk Show. Oh, what you say now? It's the Real Talk Show. Man, I ain't got nothing but real talk for you. Real Talk Show. Hello and welcome to Real Talk with R.S. Brown. I am R.S. Brown. Listen, we're super excited to be on this show, this show today with you, because guess what? We have another great one. We're gonna uh, talk about what's going on in, in the world right now. You know, we usually how, uh, get all this happy stuff and all stuff like that, which, which, you know, we're still gonna do that, but I think it's imperative for, you know, we our mission is to educate while entertain. So my whole mission for you today is to educate you some, you know, some things that's going on that you may not have seen and seeing some other views. You know, we got an officer that, someone who's gonna be on the show today. And we also have a person, I mean, two young people who uh, put together a protest yeah, a protest themselves, and it was truly successful. We're gonna show you that and give show you some footage from that as well. I mean, we just we had so much amazing, amazing things that I'm just excited to be able to bring back to you today. How about that? How, how about that? We're gonna we're gonna have a good time with it. We're gonna have a good time with it. Listen, you tune in to Real Talk with R.S. Brown. We'll be back. It's the Real Talk Show with R.S. Brown. Real Talk Show. Man, I need help. Come on in. If you're tired of getting messed up and you want to get shaped up so that you can level up, come see Coach Neighbors at Tobacco Road Barbershop, 2587 Tobacco Road, Georgia, 30815. Give me a call at 706-394-0617. Again, 706-394-0617. Come holler at me. Put me in the game, Coach! We got two amazing young ladies who put together a pro, a, a peaceful protest right here in the CSRA in downtown Augusta. And I met them back at the statue where the protest took place. And I tell you what, these are two phenomenal young ladies. And I attended the peaceful protest, and it was peaceful. And not only did they protest, because I don't believe in protesting without giving uh, options and answers and solutions and, and suggestions. And so they gave them just that. They told them, go out there and vote and everything like that. And you know what? And, and while we're doing that, I'm going to go get my voting sticker. I'm going to get my voting sticker. Y'all check out this beautiful video. This guy, these young ladies are awesome. I'm going to go get my voting sticker. Hey, R.S. Brown here, here with two lovely ladies who had an amazing protest for Blackout Tuesday. Now, these are two concerned sisters that came out, you know, and came together for an amazing protest. So, now we have Alasia and Francesca. All right, how are y'all? I'm doing good. pretty good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing amazing. Now, we're trying to social distance and, uh, and be aware of what we have going on here in the CSRA today. Now, um, Hop, let's go right to the protest. Y'all had, I mean, hundreds of people out here this week protesting on what was going on. Tell me, you know, how did how did that start? Um, I woke up around like 12, and me and Francesca had already talked about just getting some 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 something together, yeah. something that we could do, even if it was a small part, it would definitely make a change. So uh, at three o'clock, I actually got the okay to start posting, and I got the okay from the sheriff's department to start protesting and rallying people uh, to come out here around like 7:30 when it was kind of cool. Everybody was able to walk, mm -hmm. and it actually turned out pretty well just for like a short notice event. Yeah. So, so are you telling me that this protest that you had came together within 24 hours? Less. Like four hours. <laughs> yeah. Wow! 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 Yeah, all use our social media platforms to get the word out there and um, everybody reposted our flyers and stuff that we made and we were we were shocked at the amount of people that actually came out wow, wow. so how did you guys come together on this um just the power of social media yeah. i saw someone taking a stand and wanted to take a stand and i wanted to take a stand too so why not work together yeah that's the only way you get stuff done so it really was just like out of an act of kindness out of just a leap of faith that i reached out to her and it was just like, let's really do this. Yeah. Now you actually did an event um, earlier too, right? So yes. tell us about that. 
Um, we did a small protest on Broad Street, um, kind of just the same route that we did before. It was about 40 people. People kept coming in like as they saw us walking down the street. It was very peaceful, but we wanted to do it a little bigger on a bigger scale. And so when she came in, anybody she knew also came with us and we just made a bigger movement. So here's my question. Yesterday, not yesterday, but when you actually had the protest, you had, you know, people all lay down on the ground. And, you know, what, what was the purpose for that? I wanted people to put their selves somewhat in the shoes, even though they couldn't feel them necessarily. I still wanted them to see. I, I knew, I already knew how hard and how, how much he could have felt so unsafe. And I just wanted people to be so vulnerable, just like George Floyd was. So I thought that was like a good way to kind of demonstrate that as a form of respect, as a form of peace. And some people don't realize how long eight minutes is. And just laying on the ground without anybody on top of you is uncomfortable as it is. And it was like a really powerful moment. Some people were crying in the audience that was there. And it was just complete silence for all eight minutes. It's really great. So there were comments on people Facebook Live that said, you know, they're, they're, they're lying on those on that dirty ground. What would you say to them? We lie on the dirty ground every day. Like the woman said yesterday at protest, we we were built on our backs. We lied on this ground. We, we came from this ground. So if you cannot lay down on this ground and show your respect, you don't deserve to walk on. Yeah, love it, love it. Now, uh, y'all charged people yesterday. Y'all gave some commands. Y'all gave some, some, some opportunities. Tell me what does the people need to do to uh, move it forward? You know, protesting is nice. What do they need to do moving this forward? They need to go out and vote. They need to register to vote. Um, make sure you're using your voices, not only on a federal scale, but on a state and local scale as well. And also support your local black owned businesses. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're figuring out where they are. Make sure you're reaching out. Make sure you're actually, you know, spending your food money there, spending your household item money there. Like, sure. make sure you're actually building these communities up so we could have a better impact in our community for sure all right well, hey that sounds good you know and, and, and we're standing here in downtown augusta out of all the places that y'all could have came back and rallied why here uh this monument holds a lot of history in augusta it's a lot of people who who don't even know the history behind this and they pass by it every day this Confederate statue, uh, people rallied, I think, a couple of years back, and it actually went mm -hmm. silent. And I felt as if, no, we have to keep the attention here. We have to let people know what's in their city, what we are built on, what we are built upon, and why we need to change it. There you have it. Young people making a difference right here in the CSRA. Join the movement. Join as much as you possibly can. Any last remarks? Make sure you're donating to bill bonds. Uh, make sure you're reaching out to your local offices. Make sure you're voting. Make sure you're just doing anything, whether that be moral, emotional, or physical support. Make sure that you're supporting our black communities out there because black lives do matter. And if you can't get out and protest, you can still use your platform on social media. Even if you don't have a huge following, um, just one spark can make a fire. I love it. There you should keep Cut the cameras! Cameras. That's, it. That's it. That's it. The Real Talk Show with R.S. Brown. Real Talk Show! Hello and welcome to Porch Talk TV. I'm your host, Renza Renee, and today my special guest is Destiny King Cannon, a.k.a. Destiny Inspired. How are you, Destiny? Hi, Renza. I am well. How are you? I am awesome. Awesome. I'm so grateful to have you on my show. Destiny, listen, I got to go ahead and tell the world, I have been knowing you ever since you were about 10 years old. 10. Absolutely. Yeah. You yes. actually uh, danced. You were the angel and you did liturgical dancing mm -hmm. in my very first stage play production and I was so proud of you. You were this bashful little girl, but when that music came on, it was like a whole different person came out. 
I remember, I remember you have an amazing stage place. Always, always have your work is phenomenal. I'll never forget that play. I mean, who who turned the heat up in hell? Oh up my up God! Up. I remember. I, and you know what? And I call myself gonna throw this out there at you, thinking that you wasn't gonna remember Ooh, that. I remember it. So good. Oh, never forget it. Yes, and that was back in I want to say maybe about two thousand and two. Yeah, because I'm I'm pushing thirty, so that was, that was that was almost two decades ago. Yes, now, so. yes, yes, and and listen, we're gonna push right forward and go to mm-hmm. 2020. Yes. You know, we are dealing with something that even I never thought that in my lifetime that we would be dealing with. So we're mm-hmm. dealing with the pandemic, as well as the issues of police brutality, mm-hmm. and it has really. It has really kind of taken a toll on me because Breonna Taylor, as well as the barbecue man we call Yaya, you know, were were murdered in my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. And then dealing with George Floyd, which has actually caused a worldwide protest. What are your, what, I mean, what does that feel like for you as a person that's, almost 30 years old. I mean, could you ever imagine something such as this? Um, I never could. And I find it interesting. I say this often is that I feel like I have become now my ancestors and now the forefathers and foremothers who protested and, and fought for these rights and did these things so I could live in a level of freedom right now. And I find it interesting that history is now repeating itself and that one day my children will now look back and they won't have to reach way back to um, to the MLKs and the Malcolm X's. We're now creating a new generation of those same leaders. So they'll, they will be reaching back to the year 2020 and then further. But the fact that I am living through this in my lifetime I would have never imagined it. I could have never saw this coming. Absolutely unbelievable. And uh, and yes, we had you on the show last week, but of course, I just really wanted to bring you back. And the reason why I wanted to bring you back was because you spoke so beautifully at the um, the last one that I was able okay. to uh, t- take part in. And um, I-, I called you because I have had a heaviness in my heart because mm-hmm. I know that the world truly meant well. I know that they meant well. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, And what was weighing heavy on me is the football player Kaepernick, I'll probably say his name wrong. He took the knee because of police brutality and injustice and different things like that. And And I truly understood that. And, but I feel like it's like a synonym. You know what I mean? It's like Both of these things mean the same, but they're totally different. And to see people ask a police officer to like take a knee with me, that was that weighed heavy on me because for me, it's two different protests. I understand the knee part of it, take a knee. You know, now everybody's getting it. Now we understand what he was talking about. But to do that in reference to George Floyd, I was uneasy with that because that was actually the way that young man's life was taken away from him. And I wanted to, and I just wanted to express my feelings on that because I I wanted to, for it to be understood that that was a whole different protest. You understand what I'm saying? And I could see it come before the George Floyd situation or after but not in reference to him. And that was my own opinion. And like I said, I know the world meant well. I really do. I know that they meant well. And and, and I wanted to know what was your what, what was your thoughts on that? Um, it's interesting because I, it, I sent something, but I never really was able to articulate it or um, really give much thought process into it. But hearing you um, rationalize it out, it, it does make sense. Um, because in one case, you are... Um, taking a knee as a preventative measure to bring awareness to something. And on the other hand, due to our dear um, brother Floyd, um, unfortunately, that is the way in which his life was taken. So it's almost like memorializing, um, I got to understand memorializing the way in which he died by taking a knee. It's kind of reliving the moment um, in which how he was executed pretty much. So I definitely understand it from that perspective. And again, on a global scale, I, I really 
I negate that the world sees it like that and understands it. Uh, but hearing you explain it so eloquently, it, it does make sense. And I can see how um, one would, you know, feel that it's almost, you know, not quite the way we want to honor him. I'm grateful that the intent of the heart is right. However, in hindsight, when you look at it, I can't see how that's kind of reliving something um, so tragic over again. Yes. And, you know, I, I guess I, I felt that for the family, his daughter, his sons, his brothers, his sisters, just people reliving it over and over and over again. And we're going to take a quick break. But we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more. It's the Real Talk Show with R.S. Brown. Real Talk Show. Welcome back to, uh, to Real Talk with R.S. Brown. And we're going to go to a police officer, a local police officer, who is making national headlines off of one Facebook post. The Facebook post is that he talked to his son and asked him, was he afraid of police? And he said, yes. Now, what, what you guys don't realize is that his dad is a police and he's a police. And so I got a chance to talk to him about it and kind of get the police perspective about what's going on as well right here. We're going to go to Terrence Jackson right here from Augusta, Georgia. And yeah, oh. I didn't get my phone sticker. I'm gonna go put it on for this video. I'll, I'll be back. Let me go put it on for for this interview. Hey, RS Brown here. Now let me tell you something. You see this right here? I'm showing it right there. I got on my voting sticker because yes, I did vote, and so I had to wear it again today to show y'all that I did vote, and hopefully you guys voted too. You know, with this big election that we just had, and we're gonna have another big one in November. Another That's big right. one in November. That's so right. we need y'all to actually go out and vote. All right, I'm here with Officer Terrence Jackson, um, and and now I, I see your Facebook post. All right. First of all, how are you doing today? I mean, right. it's, it's a pretty good. tough time. Yeah, right? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good to be here. Well, listen. I seen your Facebook post, uh -huh. and so um, it was about your son and you. Y'all were having a conversation, right, you know, right. about you know everything that's going on, and you asked your son, which was so powerful to me, that you would even ask him that question. Mm -hmm. Was you know, does he trust the police? That's right. That's right. And so you are the police. Yeah, yeah. And he so, is. what was his answer? Man, um, I thought it was gonna be just, of course, Dad, you the police, you know, but that's not what it was, man. It ended up being that. Uh, Say so he did trust the police. And, wow. and yeah, man, it crushed me. It did, it crushed me. Wow. Now now you're a second generation police. Right? That's right. Yes, second sir. generation. Second, that's right. So so you the family's he's been around family who's law enforcement. Yeah. Law oh, yeah. enforcement. Oh yeah. And now do you think that, that could that come out of him just seeing you or just him seeing things out on the public eye, like just, just all the police brutality going on? Well, what were your thoughts? So, you know, what were some of the things he was telling you? I, I think it was uh, generally from the media. I think he was watching a uh, video at the time, you know, and I just thought, okay, he's watching this video, but, you know, this video ain't gonna reflect what he believes about me, what I show him. Mm -hmm. um, and no, he still, even with that video, he's watching the video, he went straight to, you know, no, I don't trust the police, and, you know, and the conversation kind of went, you know, sideways to where, I, you know, he's like, well, you know, they point the gun, all oh, it's not. And it started me, I didn't know what to say at the time. So I mm. took a pause break. Mm. And I had to look at my wife and say, did you hear what he just said? And she said, yeah, but she never minded because in her mind, you know, yeah. he's just talking. But yeah. to me, that's as big as that. It is, you're right, you're exactly right, you're exactly right. So that, that tells you how much of an impact what they're seeing on TV mm -hmm. um, is having on, on our, even our younger generation. You know, because it's, it's not, it's not, it's not it's not a lot of good things not good light on the police officers yeah, that's right and so i mean wow wow that's something so so what 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 did you tell them oh what i ended up telling them was that all officers are not bad that the news has a job to report the hot news at the time yeah um and it's not wrong that yeah, you need yeah, to stay yeah. abreast of what's going on that's right that's right um and i just told him you know you have to look at the things that's going on around you you know in person see what i do see that the officers that come to his school do you know the school mm -hmm. results that go out there okay um see what they do how they are as people see mm -hmm. the police in the public have they ever did anything wrong to you mm -hmm. he says no well that's, that goes to show you you can't just doubt the police for one story you see mm -hmm. if you never had a bad um uh, not instance, a bad instance with the police. If you yeah. never had a situation where the police did something bad to you, how can you doubt all police officers? That's right. That's right. Wow. Well, that, that's good. So there, there's a good answer. So let me ask you this. You know, we was talking offline just a little bit. You know, what are the what, what's in your mind now as a um, officer? You know, with everything going on, as far as you know, as far as the people view, I can imagine that that'd be tough. That you guys are wearing the burden 
of your uh, you know your your cards or your you know your co-workers mm -hmm. or j just in general that's right it's it's uh um, it's tough with all of us right now and i want to say all of us to be in law enforcement um because of how we are being viewed it's nothing new to us you know yeah. we've been viewed in a bad light before but you know it seems like it's getting worse um not saying that some of these instances like the one that just happened and um in Minneapolis, Minneapolis. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Just like that, man. It's just that was a situation where it should never happen. It shouldn't mm -hmm. happen that way. It, it, um, it was shown even my training that that was not the proper way to uh, get that subject to be combative, uh, to mm -hmm. be non-combative. Yeah, to get him in restraints and put him in the car. Yeah, um, I just felt like they, you know, it, it took too long, it took yeah. way too long, and. Um, Something like that makes us look bad. Yeah. You know, when we're working hard, like I you know, like I said, I work in the community a lot. I try to treat everybody like I want to be treated. Mm -hmm. When stuff like that's shown on TV, the 10 years that I put into the work, it's all, it's all been washed away because of this one officer. Wow. Or those four officers I didn't yeah. even look at. It. Yeah, man, that's, that's tough for me too, so. Wow, wow. But what would you like to tell the people? We got the platform right here. Okay. What would you like to tell the people, you know, about law enforcement, yourself, just, you know, during these times, encourage them or, you know, anything. What I want to say to everybody, get to know your local police officers. Um, that will bridge us together. My duty to me, in my mind, uh, my purpose is to bridge that gap between the communities. Being a, being a black man, being a law enforcement officer, I would love to bridge that gap between the community and the police because the police is the community and the community is the police. We are all in this thing together for safety. That's all we're here for. We're here to, to protect you. And that's been tarnished over the years. And I want you to remember that we are here to protect you. We are regular people. When we take that uniform off, we have families at home mm. that we have to go back to. We are regular people. We still go to church just like you go to church. Go to the grocery store just like you go to the grocery store. Nothing changes other than the, the, uh, the job. Mm. And I want you just to get to know your local law officers. And our local officers need to get to know you. That way, when we do deal with each other, we already know each other. We already know how we will respond. Hey, there you have it. There you have it. Now, I must ask just out of curiosity now, y'all going to check Facebook page and see, you see the rest of it. Oh, and this has been getting national attention too, uh, so I'm glad you've been able to shed light about this. But not to my other subject, uh, uh, what's the joke of the day? Oh, uh, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, R.S. See, so he's trying to be funny. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. a school resource officer out of Jefferson County School System. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. And um, because of COVID-19, they asked me to do the joke of the day. Uh -huh. uh, well, actually, I ended up getting swooned to be in the dog on person to do the uh, morning announcements in the morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. And I I try not to do it, but the principal said, no, that shouldn't do job. Mm -hmm. So to spruce it up, I did the joke of the day every day. So when COVID-19 hit, the kids were asking for the joke of the day. Uh -huh. So I had to continue to do the joke of the day. And I've been doing it via social media. Oh, wow. So y'all go to the, uh, is it Jefferson County Middle Jefferson School? Jefferson County Middle School with right? And go check out those joke of the days. Hey, they're funny too. They're pretty funny, all right? <laughs> oh, it's a good one. Oh, it's <laughs> a good stuff, one. Man, stuff, <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> it's the Real Talk Show with R.S. Brown. Real Talk Show. All right, so June is National Black Music Month, and so the James Brown uh, Family Foundation put together a little uh, jam out in the, I guess you would say jam out in the backyard, or jam out in the yard today with the JB Jam Band. That's right, they, this neighbor's out there jamming with that James Brown music. They actually kicked the month off with it. Yeah, that's right, they were the first to do it, so I thought that was absolutely amazing. We want to end this show with a little jamming section that you enjoy. Enjoy some good music right here after this so, I mean, very informational show. Listen, let me just go ahead and end the show right here. Better as possible. Good is not good enough, so be in that zone of better. You know what? I'm going to come talk to y'all one more time before I go. Yeah, do it, I do it. Let's go jam out. Like we used to say, pass the peas. What? Pass the peas. Come on, pass the peas. Well, pass them then.
jammed you out just a little bit. That was music from the JB Jamp band. And I tell you what, yeah, as y'all seen, y'all seen it, they can play. Listen, it's better as possible. Good is not good enough. So being that sound the better. Don't just be great, but be the greatest. R.S. Brown here, and I got to go. Hey, say it loud. Boom, 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 bo